Welcome to the Vintage Vibe. And today we're going to review some Luxman products from the 1980s. Luxman's L450 integrated amp and a somewhat matching T400 tuner. Ah, uh, Luxman. One of my favorite brands uh, from yesteryear and today, and in fact, one of Japan's oldest manufacturers of quality hi-fi equipment, founded in Osaka, Japan, 1925. Known in the early days, well, sometimes not known because of an identity crisis, as Luxman, Lux, or Lux Kit. One thing we do know is they built some beautiful tube amplifiers with some pretty serious iron and some real fantastic integrated tube amps from the late 60s and 70s, like this SQ38FD that I once had, some not too much later exquisite tube gear, a whole line of M-series amplifiers and pre-amplification separates, or in the 80s with their dual B circuits, weird preheating lamps, and rosewood veneer everywhere. Let's not forget the questionable Alpine days with black plastic, hybrid type amplifiers. Later classic revisions as the name was rebranding itself as a more quality serious player in high fidelity once again, including beauties like this L509X integrated amplifier of probably a year or two ago. Luxman's had its ups and downs. They've been owned by a whole bunch of different companies and they produce some really good products and some questionable products. Today, we're gonna to figure out whether the L450 and the matching tuner, the T400, fits in either one or the other of those categories. Unfortunately, when I got them, they weren't in the greatest condition. Um, I purchased them from a gentleman that uh, really enjoyed using them but didn't take the greatest care of them. They were covered in nicotine. They smelt like they were, in, uh, I don't know, in some 1970s lounge for the last 40 years. And I had to disassemble and scrub them. Boy, look at that water turning yellow. Disassemble them and clean them more, including the boards. Deoxit, lube the controls, and test them. It would seem not just once, twice, but three times before I actually got them sounding half decent. And today we're going to talk a little bit about that, uh, that journey, and whether or not the Luxman of the 80s, particularly the L-series amps like the 450, are worth collecting, worth holding on to and listening to. So back to the pair. When you see them like this, they look awfully handsome, I must say. Quality built separates that would live up to the name Ultimate Fidelity Stereo Component by Lux Corporation. Oh, they did again, confused with their name. But in all seriousness, I really want to get my hands on a pair of these things. Um, I mean, just Luxman to me is the pinnacle of audio design, and it's something really special. Which is what I thought until I started looking a little closer and held them in my hands, wondering where the weight had gone. By the way, this isn't real rosewood veneer like most think. It's actually vinyl. And for those who don't believe me, you look a little closer and you'll see it actually bubbles around the feet where the screws have been tightened down. And when you start looking inside, they're a little spartan with somewhat wimpy looking capacitors in the power supply and tuning components that look, I don't know, like something's missing. So let's take a look underneath the hood and go to some footage that I filmed when I was disassembling and cleaning the units. Just kind of a close-up of Luxman's shark fin heat sinks. Very common in the 1980s Luxman's products. Really just made with a, um, a thin or a cheap aluminum. But you know what, it's probably quite effective. A lot of surface area to cool down the unit. Talking about cooling down the unit, always good to double check the boards when you're in there. Signs of uh, heat. Usually you'll find it around resistors, kind of as you see there. Uh, it could be a sign that something is a mock or, you know what, just a sign for some stress. I mean, the unit is 30 to 40 years old and um, by design, if it does run hotter in different areas, uh, you might likely will see some board discoloration. But if the resistors themselves looked burnt, um, that would be in particular a cause for concern. It almost looks like the, um, the discoloring is actually more around the transistors you see there more than anything. And they do run hot. Here's a little picture here of my thermometer that I've had on the top of that Luxman. It's nearly 40 degrees Celsius. And yep, I'm partially to blame. I mean, doesn't everyone stack these things on top of each other? And there is a little more clearance between these units uh, than some components, but it's probably still not enough. 
And for that reason, I don't recommend stacking these units on top of each other. If you want it to live a long, healthy life, you gotta let it breathe. Now let's go back to another clip looking inside that Luxman. Well, it kind of looks like a 1980s Cadillac inside, lacking and without. <laughs> um, you still do have the famous badge on the front, you know, uh, Ultimate Fidelity by Luxman, but there seems to be some stuff missing when you kind of look at the amplifier. And no, I didn't remove the bottom. I mean, this is kind of like the glass floor where the glass falls out. There is no bottom. And this is due in part to a movement around uh, cheapening production costs. The boards don't look terribly um, impressive. The power supply capacitors kind of look like thimbles. Um, let's hope it really didn't show in the overall sound presentation of the amplifier because at this point, not terribly impressive except maybe for the power transform, which actually looks to be decently sized. Everything else though inside, um, it doesn't look like a Luxman to me. I'm not shitting you, there's no bottom. Oh, can I say that on YouTube? Um, but they're, they are meant to slide into these wooden, these full wooden cases. So it's not like you can stick your hand right underneath of it and electrocute yourself or anything like that. Now, um, let's take a peek at uh, some tips for disassembling this unit. If you do go to remove your L450 space plate, be careful, particularly with the center toggles you see here. They're just made out of plastic. They have almost like a chrome cladding on them, so they're not real metal. If you do break them, I don't think you'll likely find a replacement. And if you do go to fit this face back on, it's not fitting properly, as I found out. Uh, these LEDs have probably not slid properly into the groove here. Push too hard, you'll likely break the LED housing. Or across the back here, uh, the solder joints for the LED lights themselves. So that's a little cautionary note when you are uh, cleaning your L450. Little side note, if you do go ahead to uh, remove the faceplate off the tuner as I did to clean it, that dial you see there is actual glass. And when you do remove the faceplate, the metal portion, the glass is just held in simply by two rubber grommets. You have to very carefully manipulate to get it out. And I mean careful because uh, a little piece of glass, if it does break, I don't think you'll likely find a replacement anywhere. Can't be all that bad, can it? Here is my favorite part of that Luxman tuner. And that takes me back to better times. <laughs> flight into the dangerous world of a man who does not exist. And on a more serious note, this, this was seen by the folks at Luxman as a futuristic feature, tuning direction. As we tune in one direction, we can pick up a station and oh, look at that, we got three, almost four LEDs. You can go right up to five for signal strength. And if we tune in the other direction, the light should go the other way, I would think, eventually. There they are. And we can go back this way and back that way again. And Michael, Michael, let's dial into 96.1. Geez, thanks, Kit. Well, I always thought the 80s was a little less boring than that. I guess it is kind of a cool feature though, and you do have a test tone switch there, I guess for um, either annoying your neighbors or creating a test tone. Now let's take a peek at a few more features. Now we do have Luxman's patented dual B circuit. I'm not quite sure what it does, but I'm sure it does something good. Um, it is a relatively low distortion amplifier, you know, for the era. You do have provisions here for main and remote. You've got your tone controls and a series of all these little switchy doodahs, kind of like in kit, in order to adjust your crossovers and give yourself some low boost, kind of like the turbo boost. And um, this neat little feature here, which is your power indicators.
Now, from what I remember, at least in the 80s, LED indicators did make everything better. I mean, they were cool, they were cutting edge, and Luxman followed suit. And on the back of the unit, you've got a provision for all kinds of different inputs, as you'd expect of an amplifier of this caliber. Uh, you also have, which you don't always see, separates um, or separation for your power and your preamp with a switch on the back, which by the way is a good thing to clean just to make sure that um, it's not interrupting your signal. So I will share with you, um, the unit does sound a little better now than what it did downstairs and uh, there is a reason why. When I was in agony downstairs listening to the unit, I decided to double check the DC at the outputs and I actually had a excessively high, in my opinion, DC offset of over 100 millivolts. So I went ahead and I adjusted the thing and by the way, there is no manual out there for it. It is VR701, I believe, for DC offset and bias is 702. And when we did that, interestingly enough, the Luxman kind of came into its own. And I'll tell you a few things about the sound signature of this amplifier that actually make it not as bad as you think, or at least as I would allege you to believe. So the amplifier actually sounds pretty decent uh, considering the build quality was really kind of sketchy at best. Um, in particular, the high frequency of this Luxman is, is very elegant sounding. That's the best way to put it. Um, it's, um, it's not bright, it's not overly bright, but it's accurate and not in a sterile type of way like sometimes British amplifiers are uh, faulted for, but as in a, a lush, realistic, um, clean, just enjoyable high frequency that comes from this unit. The mid-range is pretty liquid. Um, the one thing that I would say probably um, it does lack a little of is some of the bottom end. It doesn't have as much authority as I, I would like to hear, but you know, this is early in my listening impressions because uh, I really just got it hooked up today to kind of my reference speakers, the Fostex. And at this point, it's kind of growing on me. And here's another quick listen. Not bad. And to give us some final conclusions on the Luxman before we part ways today. Michael Knight, a young loner on a crusade to champion the cause of the innocent, the helpless, the powerless, in the world of criminals who operate above the law. Nah, I'm just kidding you. So it's kind of neat to look at, but the build quality, it's not quite there. So don't get your hopes up in that respect. But all in all, the package, I mean, it, it sounds pretty decent for what it is. And considering you could probably buy a pair anywhere between $350 to about $600, depending on condition, it's not a terrible deal for a Luxman. And at the very minimum, you'll be able to show all your friends that you have ultimate fidelity stereo components. And you too are hip. In a 1970s slash 80s kind of way. So let's ask Michael what he thinks about it, yay or nay? I think he'd tell you it was somewhere in the middle. And with that, thanks for joining.